I'm Martin Dorn, I'm a wildlife filmmaker. My first camera I cut the lens off with a carving knife to see how the shutter worked. It was always, in a sense, lack of resources that drives innovation. Certainly doing macro photography when I was doing it, there was very, very little off-the-shelf equipment for doing it. There was very little kind of instruction how to do it. So when I discovered that I could make an extension tube out of sellotape and a toilet roll, that began an improvisation process possibly that never really stopped. Essentially it starts off with a problem. The problem is, look, I want to see this thing. I mean, if you take something really simple, let's take army ants, one of the most spectacular ants of all, but if you go anywhere near them, they either run away or they attack you. You can't just film them in a normal way. And so in order to film army ants, that's when we made a thing years ago called Ant Cam. And it's now evolved into Franken Cam, which is a much more compact, more precise thing. That device solved all of those problems in one hit and gave us the most extraordinary freedom to film in the wild. You could certainly observe really tiny details of their behaviour in a way that, you know, has never been done before. And so ultimately AntCam was a desire to solve the problem. Night photography has been a much harder battle. All the things we take for granted about filming in the daytime, we no longer have, you know, the, the thing out of the corner of your eye that draws you and you realize, oh, this is going to happen. Well, you don't have that at night. You don't know what's going to happen next often. Filming at night, you know, we struggled for years with image intensifiers, trying to make images that people were interested in. And, you know, in the end, they were kind of gray. Or maybe we made them a bit blue. And they were always a bit grainy. But when the thermal cameras came along, these cameras here, when they arrived, that transformed everything for us because it meant we had somewhere to go when the grainy image got too bad but it also meant that we could actually see much further than we ever could with more clarity and it enabled us to film more as we do in daytime because we could get a better sense of the surroundings, we could see which animals were coming in and we could see what was going to happen next. So for me, being able to understand night and see at night has been a much bigger um, advance. Certainly there's lots and lots more interesting behaviour at night that are more subdued in the daytime just because of the heat. Revelations come thick and fast when you're filming stuff in detail. Quite often you're the first person to truly observe this animal in the detail. But going into darkness then suddenly shows animals behaving quite differently and you know for me the revelation was that light levels are controlling the way nocturnal animals behave to a very large degree. On the plains of the Maasai Mara, and it's a pattern I've now seen over and again, that essentially if the moon is out, lions, because of the short grass or when there's short grass, lions don't even bother to hunt uh, except to steal hyena kills, whereas on starlit nights, lions can hunt anything they want with impunity. Their camouflage is such that in black and white, for example, and to the monochromatic vision of any animal in that light level, a lion on ordinary grass is invisible. It's perfectly counter shaded against starlight. But there are other things, you know, very recently I filmed dolphins that night in bioluminescence, which is an image that I'd read about and I really wanted to try and film, but always doubted whether or not it was truly possible with the starlight camera that we've developed specially to do that, and it worked. Well, I think as a filmmaker, the greatest challenge is to get people to be interested in dark, grainy images of the night. But at the same time, I've worked really hard to make them more attractive, and I think we've got to a point where they're attractive enough to truly tell a story. And therefore, the challenge then is to film in the deep ocean at night, in colour. <laughs>